learn about how to make a blog. There's a lot of bloggers that use blog Blogspot, and you can see how they've set theirs up. It's really easy to use, so that's how you should start. Well, let's say somebody is wanting to get into this, and they don't have a blog, they don't have a portfolio, they wouldn't really create a blog because they have no pictures. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that really needs to be touched on. Um, let's say your first step um, in your when you write it out at the beginning is, okay, I'm going to purchase a, a digital SLR. So you're going to go and you're going to figure out which brand you want to be. You want to be Nikon, you want to be Canon, because whichever one you choose is pretty much the one you're going to stay with. You're going to stay there and you're going to buy the lens. And you, yeah, and you're going to be loyal to that company most often. Some people switch, but whatever. So once you do that, and then you're like, okay, who am I going to shoot? You shoot everyone. Like, this is a big deal. You, it doesn't, I'm sure you have, you know, if you go to church, shoot church people. If you go to, you know, your kids in sports, shoot them. You know, if you have a photogenic best friend. Yeah, you, you shoot anyone you can. Um, couples. Couples, especially. One of my um, biggest like inspirations is shooting uh, one of my best friends and you if you go to my blog you will see her everywhere in my personal galleries because um, along the way she actually learned how to model really well and you would think she was a model but she had no clue and it's just like we learned that process together and then you feel really comfortable with them and then from that point I would recommend that you know you talk to your friends do some free sessions it doesn't hurt it does not matter if you start out free I started out free, you know. I started out free. Yeah. If you're going to build a portfolio, you know, whatever, do, do no it. No one who views your website knows how much those people pay for you to take their exactly. pictures. They only care about what the picture looks like. Yeah. And so then I always say from that point on, if you're on Craigslist and you're like, hey, I'm trying to build up my portfolio, you will get calls. Trust me. Oh, you will. And you'll be nervous, but you know what? As long as you... Compose yourself, you'll be fine. If you if you seem nervous to them, they're gonna have a reaction to that, and they're gonna be like, "What's going on? This is chaos." But if you know, even if you have no clue what you're doing, you just act like you know what you're doing. Because really, that's the art of wedding photography. Because I think whoever begins wedding photography, they have no clue what they're doing. And up until a certain point, that's when you start to get relaxed. But up until then, you're like, "I don't know what's going on." Because there is no manual. Right. And, well, actually, there are manuals, but. They're not. Really none, yeah, happens. none written for your specific style. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then on Craigslist, once you get the free down and you're like, cool, got this portfolio thing going on, got a lot of pictures, you're doing really good, I really think I'm good enough to charge. Okay, fabulous. Then you charge for that. And you can just be $25, $50 for a mm -hmm. session, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then so you start doing that. And eventually it will build up where, you know, you get into $100 a session, $200 a session, you know, $350 a session. It will get to that point. It, it's a gradual process. Right. And, but there is no shame in starting out in places like Craigslist, advertising on um, Facebook, like just... Just even with your status on Facebook, say, hey, I'm looking to take some, you know, family portraits or couple portraits. Everybody on Facebook knows somebody who's in a relationship that you can shoot and that probably um, will let you shoot it for free, especially. So Yes, and people love free pictures, mm -hmm. especially if you're willing to upload the proofs to Facebook and tag them in the pictures. They really like that, so... I like pictures of me even blurry. Whatever. As long as, you know, as long as it's a picture of me, and that's that's what you got to think. They're going to like this almost no matter what. I mean, it, you're going to take a lot to really screw up something right off the bat. So, but I think that's a great way to start out is Craigslist. And, you know, I don't, there's a lot of talk on the forums, on podcasts about uh, so-called newbies who start out on Craigslist or taking everyone's business away. I don't think that's true. You know, because... Honestly, you know, you starting out, somebody starting out on Craigslist is not in the same price range as me, so I don't care if you're on Craigslist because your target bride isn't my target bride, so we, I would rather work together and see what we can learn from each other than, you know, say, oh, you're a newbie, you don't know anything. Because honestly, um, it doesn't take school. That's what's kind of hard about wedding photography. There is no certification. There's no certification. It's not like I was um, a real estate salesperson. Okay, well, technically, I'm considered a real estate salesperson in Indiana, but I don't know how to sell a house. I, I have a degree in you, engineering. Yeah, you probably know how to sell a house better than I do. 
you know. <laughs> I don't know anything about selling a house. But technically, I am a professional real estate agent. <laughs> I don't understand how that's possible. But, you know, and that's what the difference is with photography. Because, you know, even now, I've done a lot of weddings, a lot of portrait shoots. I still, I still get that thing in my head, like, oh, I'm not a professional. Like, you know, other people see me there as that. There is no definition. Yeah. So they, don't ever ask what is a professional photographer because there's no definition. No, no answer to the question. No. So, you know, don't freak out about that, but don't be discouraged by all of these people on the internet saying bad things about people starting out like this, because honestly, you don't have to go to school. Yes, we attended school, and, um, but that is a separate route. You don't, you, honestly, I don't even think you need to go down that road, because seriously, everything you need to learn about photography, you can learn on the internet, books, YouTube. By going to art museums and looking at art. Yes, art is very important, and I find most of my inspiration from artists, like painters and mm -hmm, sculptures. Definitely. It doesn't even have to be photography. So you just research art and there you go. So, Well, and uh, one more website we want to mention for you guys. Um, once you start building your portfolio and you're ready to move beyond the blog, because it is important to have a digital storefront, Yes. Um, we encourage you to visit a site called Blue Domain. And it's spelled B-L-U-D-O-M AIN.com. And both Heather and I utilize Blue Domain. We think they're great. They Their rock. Templates are awesome. Yeah. It's so easy to edit your website. Um, you can seriously be an internet people. moron and get your site going. And if you look, visit Heather and I's sites, JessicaFelt.com, JustBebrook.com, and you'll see the product of Blue Domain. And and once, yeah, once you start recognizing the templates of Blue Domain and you start researching, you know, it's always important to research local photographers because, you know, one, they are your competition. Two, you can learn from them. See, you know, the um, photography in California, a lot different than it is because we're from Indiana. So, you know, some of that stuff that's like really cool out there isn't quite making it over here yet. We're still in selective color land. So... You know, and if you do select a color in California, they'd probably laugh and be like, where's my real picture? So, um, once you start recognizing the Blue Domain templates, you'll see that everybody uses Blue Domain. Like, I, I, I don't think I can honestly, I could say one photographer that doesn't use Blue Domain, but other than that, almost everybody I know. So, I think that's a great site, and it's only... Um, isn't it 200 to start everything? It's um, 100 for your template and then and 100 a year hundred, for yeah, hosting. hosting. 200 bucks, and you know cannot beat that. No, absolutely it, not. And so you get your domain name on any site like GoDaddy, for instance. GoDaddy, like ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Danica Patrick. Yeah, <laughs> remember that. And then you go to Blue Domain, and it costs 200 dollars. And let me tell you, you aren't gonna book. Okay, the rarity of you booking someone by meeting them firsthand kind of rare, but then going across your site, that's how you're going to book, because we are in the internet generation, people are at work and they're googling wedding photographers, you know, they, so that's how you're going to book them, so it's very important that the money you do invest, I would say the two most important things are um, online marketing and your website and uh, lenses, so that's something to keep in mind, because you're going to be spending quite a bit of money, but if you do it properly, it will pay off in the end. A few topics we'll talk about next time are contracts, very important when you start booking your sessions. So that's it for this time. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, and have a great evening. Visit www.shootabride.com. Shoot not shoot the bride. Not shoot, shoot the bride. A bride. Shoot a bride. Yeah. Dot com. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.